August the 8th. And it's my wife's birthday. Say hi! Everyone say happy birthday! No, I'm talking about all of you YouTubers out there. Thanks, guys. Welcome to Vlog 8. Hey, buddy. We are on our way now to try to get, um, go out to eat for my wife's birthday. Our babysitter had some unexpected plans come up, so we are carting the entire family with us in an attempt to have a nice evening dinner. Safe Light Auto Glass came out and replaced the windshield a few days ago, actually this past Friday. Um, while we were making Vlog 7, I had everything taken, no, no. Actually, halfway through, whatever, it's been replaced. Now, what I did find interesting is they actually replaced it with a Mopar windshield. So I've got all my little Jeep little doohickamajiggies all over the windshield back. And it's kind of weird. It's almost like the factory windshield is thicker than the generic. I don't know. But it's taken care of. My apologies for not having a video or capturing a video. I'll post this picture real quick. See that right there? That is Scott's boat running. He took it to the lake all day this past Sunday or Saturday and had an absolute blast and he is now all fixed up and ready to go. So we are here at California Dreamin' here in upstate South Carolina to have the Weiss birthday dinner. That's our exit right there. But there's a big white, well not a white squall, there's a rain squall ahead. So we figured, what the heck, we're gonna go right through the rainstorm and get the Jeep a quick little bath. So I'm editing a video right now for Vlog 8, and I need to tell you this story so you can understand this next part with the key. Now, my kids are getting older. We also have the little one crawling around, and stuff is disappearing. An example, our Apple TV fourth generation, that new fancy remote that looks, you can interact with games and stuff, missing. Okay, that's an expensive remote. And it really bugged me, especially when you have OCD like me. You like things to be where you have them. When you have kids, OCD and kids don't mix because kids like to do the craziest things. And you will find the craziest things underneath the couch, cushions behind the couch, and so forth. Then, my Jeep spare key went missing. Not that big of a deal, but when you're filming and stuff, I always keep my main set of keys in the Jeep. Others, the spare set hanging up on the keychain ring thing when you walk into the, our, our house through the garage. And it's there in case somebody needs to unlock the Jeep or do something. If, the, uh, if I'm not out or something, it's just it's a spare set of keys. They go missing. So then we wonder now if it's the kids playing hide and seek and stuff. I rip the house completely apart. Can't find the key. So then my wife happens to say, oh... I might have thrown it out the last time I used her Jeep by accident. I put it in my car, I think, and I threw a bunch of trash out. I kid you not, two-week-old trash I went through with gloves until the very bottom there were... Ugh, no, I, am, I, I could I was like, all right, I'm done. So I went ahead and ordered a generic key off of eBay. You'll see the picture and stuff here in just a second. Because I called, Christ, I called my local Jeep dealership and I said, hey, what's a spare key run me? $225. So, burp. next clip. Ah, that's poop. <laughs> it's generic. It's generic. That's who I got it from. What I got... And I'm not disappointed about this, but it looks like a generic or compatible uh, Chrysler 
Jeep key. Um, I was kind of hoping it would say Jeep on the back and, you know, the little writing, but that's not that big of a deal. As long as this works, and as long as the dealer can program this, or the locksmith, we are good to go. So I just left the Dodge dealership to get a printout with a, a code. There's two numbers. There's a number for the actual key cut, and then there's a pin code that a locksmith that has the capabilities needs to go into the car computer to program the new remote into the Jeep. So now I'm gonna go back to the locksmith and see if we can get this to happen. I kid you not, it took the locksmith two minutes to take care of my key. Here is my spare key, and I also bought a little Jeep keychain. Why? Because I hope maybe that will make it harder for my wife to lose. Um, $35.95 for the key on eBay. I'll leave a link in this video from where I got it from. Uh, $37 to program the key. And actually, I don't even think he charged me for this. $42.23 for the out the door at the, the locksmith with the key thingamajiggy. Um, $78.24 out the door. That's a heck of a lot better than $2.25 at the dealership. So that's a huge thumbs up to um, ABC Locksmith in Greenville, South Carolina. Thank you guys. I filmed all day yesterday. I didn't get done till midnight editing everything. Uh, I got a head cold, but I got a surprise for y'all. Uh, the wife every year, or sometimes twice a year, has some hair straightening technique done to her hair, which is very expensive, but she never asked for much except to get rid of the Mustang. And she's out getting her hair done right now. So, it is Daddy Sunday today, and we're going to go to the warehouse for a surprise. So stay tuned. Yay! All right, bud, you ready to go? This is gonna be a cool surprise. I am super excited. This is a real big deal for me. The question is, when is it too blue? You'll see in a second. So here's the surprise. One of the things I really, really, really loved when the uh, new Wranglers came out, especially in Cosmo Blue, was the Sahara uh, with the colored match hardtop. Now, if you've seen some of my other videos, you know my hardtop is just this. Oh, easy awning. Poor thing. He just woke up too. My hardtop's the factory black color. So, my buddy Mark over at Paint Masters, about a mile away, is going to paint my hardtop Cosmo Blue. Now, I've tried looking for one, and it, they don't exist anymore. I mean, it was really, really rare for me to find just the uh, fender flares from a, uh, taken off from another Jeep. So, we're going to go try to get the hardtop off while Daddy, yeah, we'll have to do this somehow safe and film at the same time. And we're going to try to document Mark actually painting the top. So this ought to be pretty cool. So let's get to it. There's the hard top. Somehow I've got to safely get that hard top down without damaging the poor boat. <sighs> we, that way I don't even want to go there. Uh, and get that either on the trailer or on the back of the truck without the kid getting hurt. Alright, 
<laughs> yeah, it, the trailer is a custom made trailer that we had built specifically so you could haul four pallets. The weight of it is pretty significant. So I think the Jeep will like that. And. So, so what? Hey! Yay! If we could just get this part going. Alright, let's go. Depending on what you're after. Yep, because, because of the texture. No, 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 not that. Okay. It's, do you want to paint inside the jams here? And, you know, take this rubber off and take this rubber off and get underneath here and stuff. Paint Masters. Let's see if we can do this correctly. Paint Masters in Malden, South Carolina. If you live in the southeast area, upstate South Carolina, these guys are the best of the best in the upstate. And this is Mark and this is Pam Lawyer. They've had Paint Masters for years, umpteen years. That's how I met Mark many, many years ago. We've got the hard top here. Pam is the one who actually creates and makes the paint, mixes it up. And as y'all know, Grabber Blue is going to be, no, yeah, Grabber, Cosmo, Cosmo Blue Mustang. Cosmo Blue is going to be a challenge. So. Well, uh, yeah, see, this is going to be lots of fun. Say bye to black. Now, what's going to be a little bit of a challenge, kind of interesting, is the texture. Now, on the factory painted hardtops, it is smooth. And on the regular matte hardtops, they have a Sierra blue. texture. Cosmo. Sierra blue. That's what they call it. The Sierra book. blue. Yeah, this is Sierra. Are... Uh, I just didn't so want this you will to be say the wrong color and somebody quite interesting. You. Just been told. Holy crap, look at that. So while we're waiting for everything that could be completed with the hardtop, there's something I've been wanting to do that's just absolutely driving me insane. My engine's dirty. <laughs> I know it's a Jeep, I get it, but my engine's dirty. So I'm going to grab my uh, degreaser that I got from Home Depot and I'm going to spray my engine down. I cannot stress this, if you have no mechanical knowledge, um, don't do this. Don't do this if you do have mechanical knowledge. This is your disclaimer. You can screw a lot of stuff up. If you do this wrong, you can screw a lot of stuff up if you do this right. But if you get really lucky, which most of the times I've had no issues, you'll come out with a really nice clean engine. Now, most of the times I love Purple Power. I love Purple Power. But for some reason, I bought this stuff from Home Depot. Now, my pressure washer is not in my garage right now because I have somebody borrowing it, but when I used to do restorations on motorcycles and stuff, believe it or not, when I'm degumming a carburetor, I completely disassemble the carburetor down to the bare metal, take all, all the O-rings out, everything. And I would spray it with purple power and hit it with a pressure washer, and 99.9% .9 of the times the carburetors would come immaculate every time. Then I found this stuff. This stuff's amazing. This stuff you got to be careful with. This will take a lot of crap off, including crap that you don't want to get taken off. Now, so far, I haven't had any issues with body stuff paint on my uh, Jeep or anything. In fact, I just washed it the other day and did the rims and tires. 
that's some awesome stuff to get crud off your tires, especially the white letter. So I'm going to use that to spray on my engine and hose it down without a pressure washer. Again, be very, very, very careful when doing this because you can mess a lot of stuff up. So let's get to it. So I've got my stuff in a spray bottle. I've got the hose ready. I have a rag tightly stuffed out in here. Now, well, shouldn't we put it back here? My main goal in doing this is to prevent a ton of water from going down in here. Now, this will take care of the problem. Obviously, the rag will soak up a lot of water. My goal is to get this crud and all this stuff off of here. Um, does it do anything performance-wise? Not really. See, I hate this. This spray bottle that I recently got is really horrible. Let me try this again. Oh, oh that stuff's strong, too. Okay, there we go. That's a little better. Let's go back to spray. I think one of my kids messed this bottle up at one time. All right, I'm going to put the camera down while I do the rest of the engine. Um, we'll come right back to this. Get the hose and start squirting. Make sure you keep a steady stream on your body so that stuff doesn't just sit there like a soap suds. So follow the texture of your engine, like the component parts, the air intake and everything. Everywhere where dirt would be. Again, major disclaimer, you're doing this at your own risk. Okay, so I'm going to get up here now. Um, let's just get right here just to be in a safe spot. Sorry guys, I know this is shaky and everything. The main thing is, if you don't screw up anything, and again, I'm gonna throw this disclaimer in there a million times. If you don't screw anything up, the one thing you don't wanna do is leave residue behind. The residue is what corrodes stuff and messes stuff up. That looks pretty good. On the engine cover, I have wet this down just to be on the safe side. Let me spray this down real quick and then spray it right off. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do I'm going to go ahead and take this out. This is wet, but the bottom of it's dry. So, no water got into the air intake, which is good. That's exactly what I wanted. I'm going to go ahead and close the hood now, start it up, and let it run for a little while. Um, probably about 10 minutes. Let the engine heat do a lot of the uh, cleaning off underneath the uh, hood here. So we're looking for check engine lights. Running very smooth, no check engine lights, that's great. Put the AC on, that will kick the fan on underneath the hood. And uh, everything looks good. I'm gonna back the Jeep around now, let it sit downhill. Just a habit of mine, and then let it run for about 10 minutes. 
all the mutter haters out there that have like 10 inches of mud caked on their jeeps are laughing their heads off at this video i get it i know it make fun of me it's okay i get it man look at that thing now what i did is i took my nice little car wash towel i wiped the jeep down where i got all the water and everything just so there's like i said the residue is what kills your paint and stuff so everything looks nice and then again i washed the jeep a couple of days ago because i went to a construction site and this thing turned uh sand gray very quickly but as you can see everything looks very nice a little few water spots here but look at this this is good this looks nice i wiped the uh underneath of the hood as well i wiped up in here but uh this is nice this is what i wanted to see now the engine cover the engine cover is dry it's sitting right here behind the wife's car i'm gonna go ahead and stick that back on and the engine is clean now in all honesty do you get any better performance any better gas mileage a better running engine for doing this no not at all what's the purpose of doing it well I know I get a lot of comments saying how squeaky clean my uh, Jeep is and like I said there's a lot of you out there that go mud and stuff and hey thumbs up to you no um, no hard feelings at all my Jeep's sentimental to me I paid it off I've got this thing customized in such a way that to the average person it looks like a standard um, stock Jeep but really it's a converted Sahara all the Jeep trips that we've taken as a family, uh, daily driver, I drive this thing sometimes three hours a day back and forth to uh, photography and filming jobs. So uh, yeah, it's kind of nice to give it a little nice little bath, clean it up a little bit. As far as like the, and if you do this correctly and don't screw anything up, any checking in li engine lights, I mean it's nice to have everything nice and clean, no corrosion on the battery. Um, I don't know, maybe it's a a psychological thing maybe in my head I think my Jeep runs better or something but it's nice to have it clean and to be able to be able to be capable of doing it yourself in your driveway hence this is my channel it's more of a do-it-yourself uh, channel for boat Jeep stuff at your house and not at a garage so but I'm really anxious I want to see my, my hardtop it should have been done by now I'm waiting for a phone call now